Right then people, Mondraker Crafty E-Bike. Let's have a look at this then, shall we? So the Mondraker Crafty E-Bike sits in the upper half of the Mondraker E-Bike Enduro and all mountain range. Uh, the Chaser and the Dust models of the bike, they're their entry level and mid range options. Uh, but the Crafty is really where things start to get serious, and the Crafty R is the sort of first of six options that are in that range. With all Mondays, um, the Crafty R features that Mondraker forward geo. Now, back in 2012, Mondraker were the pioneers of this new look uh, geometry on bikes. It completely revolutionized the industry. Um, until then, everyone kind of thought short reach and short wheelbases were the best for cornering and um, so everybody was kind of like sitting higher up above the bike now what Mondraker did they literally started that long slack and low trend in bikes which nearly all brands have now copied since so that slack head angle and long stance basically what it does is you sit between the wheels instead of above them so your central gravity is lower and the grip and the weight transfer in the corner is massively enhanced also because it's longer lower and slacker it means the bike is super planted and it's much more stable in a straight line which is really confidence building for a lot of riders out there that maybe aren't as experienced so I've got to admit, it took me a while to get used to this bike at first because I wasn't used to such a long, a slack bike. My other trail bikes and other bikes I've tested, they've all been sort of longer and slacker and I've rode 29ers, but this one, I wasn't used to that sort of really super long, super slack. I found it really, I found it coming out uh, quite high in turns and I felt like I was trying to get such a large, like a boat round some of the switchbacks and the tight turns. However, after a while, I kind of reminded myself that I've got to kind of let this bike come to me. And so I changed my riding position and boy, did it improve. And before I knew it, it was absolutely on fire. Uh, after a little while, I was sitting lower on the bike. My confidence was growing. And then by the time I took it out for a second ride where I took it to Landegler in North Wales, it was absolutely on fire i was shooting through trees single track i just couldn't seem to find where the limit of the grip was on this bike it was almost like the bike was sort of like taunting me and telling me to go faster and begging me come on come on let's go uh, i was going over roots over rocks and it just felt so grippy even climbing like loose rocks and roots and sort of big jaggedy rocks i was just like going up them obviously the e-bike helps um, but i wasn't getting that normal wheel spin that you sometimes get on loose surfaces especially like like when you're in turbo mode on an e-bike so by the way if you do want to see that trail guide uh, I'll probably put a card on the screen now but you can also go to the end and I'll probably be a link below and all that sort of jazz uh, but yeah go check out that trail guide of Clandegla where I do the whole trail guide on this e-bike there's a lot of people out there who say e-bikes can't jump obviously that's rubbish because we've all seen videos with Sam Pilgrim and people like that jumping e-bikes however you do have to change your style a little bit with e-bikes they are a lot heavier uh, and you can't just pop and lift and manhandle them like you can a regular bike uh, so what I do find with some e-bikes is the weight balance can catch you off guard a bit. Obviously, there's a lot of extra weight, there's a big battery, and there's a motor. And sometimes, I've been on some e-bikes where I've hit a jump that's a, a regular jump, I'm very used to it, and all of a sudden, uh, I'm almost going over the bars, I'm almost having a massive OTB, simply because that extra weight if it's not quite balanced once you go past a certain point it's really hard to get it back what i will say about this mondi is it just seems so balanced i was jumping this all day even some of those really dodgy transitions that are at clan degler at the minute just didn't catch me out at all i mean i was there was a section where i was watching one guy go past and it was scary as we was hitting this transition but for whatever for whatever reason when i came through that same section just didn't catch me out at all and i was perfectly fine so the handling gets a big thumbs up so let's have a look at the rest of the bike so let's look at the specifics it's got a Bosch powered gen 4 motor and it's got a 625 watt hour battery setting up the Bosch app was really easy there's Bluetooth connectivity to my phone it was dead easy to use it clicked in straight away uh, and then obviously that apps really useful and you can change settings and you can do all sorts on the Bosch app as for range the 625 watt hour battery uh, it did just over 31 miles on this ride and I had about 10% left when I was finished 
finished but the Bosch operating system actually learns what sort of riding you're doing and it can, can adjust your range on the display and it kind of works out if you're really pushing hard or not and then obviously changes your range accordingly so you're never really caught out looking at the cockpit if I'm honest this is where it needs some improvement there's some minor issues and I think it's worth mentioning so firstly the main problem is the display um, as you can see on this bike I've opted for the Hope e-bike display bracket uh, this brings the whole display a lot closer to the stem and kind of keeps it protected the original display that comes from Mondraker it sits really proud in front of the handlebars and I just felt like you're just gonna get it knocked or damaged or something's gonna happen especially if you have a crash or just drop the bike for example uh, other brands they seem to excel in this department with displays which sit actually below the bars and they seem to be tucked out away and just safe it just makes more sense to me so that's probably a bit of a negative also the Bosch control buttons are very similarly spaced apart and very similarly sized I do find it a little bit tricky tricky when I was making adjustments especially when I'm on the trail now I appreciate most people before they do a run or a climb will just stick it in a certain mode and then probably never touch that those, those buttons uh, during the trail and probably do it when they stop or do it on, a, on an easy section I do like to attack a trail from time to time and occasionally I'd want to like change from EMTB mode to full turbo or maybe back down to tour mode and I found that a little bit tricky um, I'm gonna make some adjustments and I'll have a play with that and I'll probably update you later if you keep an eye on the channel but overall um, I think maybe I'll get used to it like you do changing gear I don't know but I think overall I think maybe we could have a better control button and sort of uh, set up uh, with the Bosch motor um, but it's like I say it really is uh, minor problems the only other issue was as with all brands uh, the factory grips that come on bikes are always a bit naff aren't they uh, so I've opted for the DMR death grips which if you watch my grip test the other week you'll know why I like them so much so moving on to the rest of the bike uh, it's got tried and trusted Fox suspension it's got the DPX2 rear shock and it's got the Fox 38 e-bike specific forks up front uh, these just perform flawlessly straight out of the box uh, once they were set up um, Simon at Albany Cycles was really great he got me on the bike and he set it all up for weight and everything and once it was set up it just worked i didn't have a problem with these fox forks whatsoever i've got to be honest with you i've ran fox on a few bikes now i know some people prefer rock shocks over fox but i've always found fox just to be so consistent yeah it's 160 millimeters at the front and 150 millimeters on the back and it's got the 148 millimeter rear axle it comes with 29 inch wheels uh, DT Swift hubs and rims and then obviously tried and tested Maxxis minion tires I love minion tires I've had minions now on the last couple of bikes I've ridden um, they yeah some people moan that they drag a bit in the summer but I'll be honest with you just I like to have grip all the, all the time so minion tires are always kind of like a go-to option for me uh, when it comes to stopping the bike we've got SRAM G2R four-part e-bike specific brakes that was a mouthful uh, they've got 200 millimeter rotors front and rear so they're pretty massive um, so I've had, there was no issues with that and again they were they were just great straight out of the box they usually with disc brakes you need them to bed in for the first few miles but these just felt good straight off the bat didn't really need to leave them to bed in and I didn't feel like I needed more power or any modulation whatsoever it's got race face e-bike specific cranks these actually come a little bit shorter than normal at 165 millimeters as opposed to 175 millimeters but then that obviously makes uh, clearance a little bit better and pedal strikes are much less of an issue yeah 12 speed SRAM Eagle SX group set you know perform flawlessly not a lot more to say about that one of the last components worth mentioning is the on off seat post now performance wise the dropper post works fine and on the large size of bike which I have it's a 170 mil drop that comes with it as standard I think on the mediums and the small it's a uh, I think 150 and 140 or maybe 160 and 140 something like that um, one of the things I found though is the seat tube isn't straight so this means you can't put the seat all the way down if you've got a 170 mil drop if you want it to go any lower you need to go for like a 150 drop or something because obviously the bottom half of the seat post is just too long because there's a like a kink in the seat tube uh, I'm five foot ten and this is a large frame so obviously if you're smaller than me you're probably going to be going to a medium so I don't think it's going to be a major issue uh, but it's definitely something that I'm going to pay attention to especially when I start to do more steeper and techie trails which I do like to do so once I get into those steep techie trails it's going to be interesting to see if the seats 
if I can't get the seat out of the way if it's too high. Um, but yeah, that's probably something that you need to pay attention to um, in the shop before you sort of ride it out of the shop and use it. You might want to get to swap the seat post on it. It's up to you, but it's definitely something you just want to consider. Not a massively negative point, but again, it's just probably just some advice you want to look at. And regardless of the frame size, you get a 65 degree head angle, a 73.5 degree seat tube angle, a 455 millimeter chainstay, and a 355 millimeter bottom bracket height with a minus 25 millimeter bottom bracket drop. Now that's the same regardless of your the size of the bike. I went for the large frame, so the reach on the large is 490 millimeters. Now, uh, when you compare, it's very hard to compare Mondraker with other brands. Um, I usually ride a medium, and I usually go for a reach of around 450 millimeters, which is what the reach was on my last trail bike. Now, um, the medium, I had to go on the medium and the large in the Mondes, and the medium in the Mondes actually has a reach of 470 millimeters, so it's 20 millimeters longer. So on paper, it looks like you're definitely going to go for the medium if you're used to riding something that's a little bit shorter, and the Mondraker medium is even longer than your normal medium, if that makes sense. However, when I tested the both bikes out, the Crafty in the medium felt really short and it just it, it was mad I just thought it was way too short I got on it and I was like no this is way too short got on the large and it felt great so it's probably just goes to show you that geo is everything and you can't just go on numbers that you're used to and you think well I usually have a 450 reach so I'll have always have a 450 reach actually it still changes depending on your geo uh, and it just goes to show you that we're always learning in this game you know you never seem to learn it all just when you think you've got it all sorted something comes along and it's, it's different and it kind of like skews your opinion to summarize the Mondi Crafty RE bike well it gets a massive thumbs up from me it performs like a dream it's got great components and certainly think anyone who's buying one is not going to be disappointed i'd probably say it is one of the best looking e-bikes out there at the moment it's got that really slick top tube that runs seamlessly into those rear stays and it looks absolutely gorgeous it's bad points well the cockpit and the seat tube affecting the seat posts are probably a bit of a negative uh, but you're always going to get compromises like that with any bike uh, and let's be honest we like to bling up our bikes with parts anyway so they're probably parts that you're going to change so i certainly don't think it's going to be a deal breaker the cost of the crafty r well it's five thousand eight hundred and ninety nine pounds i really don't know why this isn't making that top five and top ten list that other brands do on like the big online bike magazines all i can say is i don't rely on anyone for advertising revenue so make of that what you will uh but don't understand it. Um, Mondrake is a, clearly a massive brand. They're always big on the race scene. So it's one of those. Anyway, it's always good to hear what you think. So let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure you like and subscribe and do all that. The Clan Degler Trail Guide video will be on the screen now somewhere, I imagine. And um, So go click on that if you want to see this bike riding at Clan Degler and doing the trail guide. I'm going to go off shred this Mondi some more and stick it on turbo mode. And until next time, guys, take it easy. See you later. Bye.